All right, welcome to the world of black and white. I have this rule, you know, when I take a subject that I love and there is no great colors, I go black and white. And so I want to just give you a little introduction. I've got like full courses on black and white, but a little introduction on how to do black and white. This is a perfect good photo. This is a city hall of Paris taken, I forgot, I think it was like at five o'clock, but you know, because it was raining, nobody was there. So I really, really, really like the photo. And um, I think I might even turn on the lights on this one too. We'll see what happens. But first let's do it normal. Um, when I do black and white, I just go straight to black and white here. And at first it looks really grayish. So there's two things you can do to make it kind of better, but really the local adjustment is what's gonna make a huge difference. You can play around a little bit with the, with the white balance that might you know make the sky a little bit darker here. But the main trick, I mean, one of the main tricks is to go here because I, I clicked on black and white, I have this black and white mixed. And like, as the way it works is you got different colors, like reds, uh, let me show you the aqua or blue. I think there's a lot of blue, yeah. So it's gonna detect whatever blue there is and make it brighter or darker. Same thing, I like to use that. I wanna make the sky a little darker. So I'm gonna go here. Just as usual, as I told you for the HSL, try to not go over 30 on this one. Okay, but it's still like a really boring black and white. Well, let's do a couple of things. Let's do the regular workflow of opening the shadows, bringing on the highlights, doing my black point, doing my white point, and giving real contrast to this photo. So that's already like, woo, okay. Maybe add a little bit here. Uh, let's boost the texture, maybe, no, no, minus clarity, but let's boost the texture. Minus clarity is gonna bring back a little bit of the, of the natural. Um, I wanna make this photo, I love this building, it's so beautiful. I think I wanna uh, remove chromatic aberration. Well, that doesn't matter, because chromatic aberration cannot be seen in black and white. You can always on about profile correction, that can help. Yes, let's do that, and let's do the auto thing. I just, I can't stand photos which are not straight. Ah, now we are talking. Okay, and then for the fun, uh, let's do the gradients now. Let's do the gradients. So. On this one, I want to make the sky darker here, but I'm going to make it on a gradient. Uh, I mean, on an angle. And usually when I do black and white, I do it twice. I do one first one, which is like for the oval sky, kind like that. See the before and after. Maybe I can add some, oh, some contrast to it and a little bit of clarity just for the fun of it. And minus texture. You, you don't want to have some texture there. Okay, and then another gradient with kind of the same value for the very top of the photo. Something like that, yeah, the very top. Yes, I, I don't know, in classic black and white, you often have like this really black sky like this. And let's go here with the same value. It's fine, we can keep all these values. They're good, they're good values. And uh, voila, so a vignette effect. Okay, I think I want to make the whole thing a little tad darker, a little more contrasty. I love dramatic black and white. Okay, at this point, I'm ready to do my checklist. So let's do the circle. Uh, the sun, uh, I like to have like a sort of a bright point inside. So I'm going to make this really bright like this, but I want it to go behind the building. So the usual trick I've shown you over and over, the, I promised I would use it a lot and I did. So up, you see in front of the building, behind the building. In front of the building, behind the building. Just a little bit, just a little tad. Okay, so that helps to having like a point, something to look at. And then um, I'm gonna duplicate this and may make it less strong. Let's get it under 0 0.5. Let's add some clarity to it. And I just wanna make a little bit of variation, maybe smaller, uh, you know, I'm always looking for, you know, you see how this whole building has like a very kind of similar kind of gray. Uh, and by, you see, all this gray is very similar. And by adding, um, oh, I lost my gradient, I think. Yeah, I lost it. It's fine. I can just create another one. And by adding like a little circle, I'm just going to add a bit of variation into it, you know. But it's going to be very subtle, as I said. If you do it too strong, uh, people are going to notice. And... You know, the best test I always say is look at the, the next day and if you ask yourself, did I use circles? Did I dodge this photo? And if you have a doubt, you know you did it right. If you can see immediately the circles, you know you went too far. 
Okay, and then uh, that's good for the circles. The next tool is the brush. Now the brush on this one, I think I'm just going to use it. Uh, let's see, I just want to make some part. I want to make this a little bit brighter. I like to use it very locally and very subtle. You know, remember you always want to have like the flowing density in the 80s and the value is 0 0.51. That's a great point to start. And I'm just, I like that. New, I want to make new brushstrokes. I want to make the reflection on the on the s floor even stronger. It was after the rain, that's why it was empty. I got really lucky, I really loved it. I think it's the best shot I ever had of the city hall. Because, you know, every time I went there, there was like a lot of people or, yeah, look at that, look at the floor. A lot of people, or it was just not as good as this. Okay, cool. So that's the variation. Let me show you. I'm going to I just underexpose the photo a little bit. Uh, let's see if it's very sharp. It is pretty sharp. Uh, it's a bit noisy. What did I shoot this with? Uh, ISO 100. Hmm, because I underexposed it a little bit. It's okay. You see, there's a bit. Look at this noise there because it's very underexposed. So let's do. Um, when it's very noisy, I go to the no sharpening section here and I'm going to go and do like 20 of noise reduction. It's already better. And then I'm going to do my sharpening around 80. 80 plus 20 makes 100. Now it's kind of coming back, but check this out. As I use the masking, look at the sky, look at the sky, look at the sky. And the sky is going to become again like this. And just the building is kind of sharp. Uh, yes, I think it's kind of cool. I love that photo. I really like it. So now let's do a little variation and let's see. I'm going to right click and virtual copy and I'm going to turn on the lamps. Uh, they have beautiful lamps in... Uh, in the um, city hall so I'm gonna make uh, one circle like this and you've seen me do this over so I'm just gonna show you again the base so you boost the exposure you make the feathering the feathering can keep it this way you just make the range luminance a little under and now I have to copy and paste that everywhere so I'm gonna do this in oh so you see the luminance made it go behind and then I'm gonna let's make this speed so right click duplicate and then uh, so one thing I advise you to do when you make something like this right click duplicate it's lagging a bit that's why you don't you don't see it and there's so many lamps there's a lot of lamps on this place so I might take a little while uh, but then I'm gonna do it okay I'm looking at I think it's gonna work out really well so let's copy that to all the lamps really quick uh, in acceleration mode Okay, so now we need to make the radiation and that's going to be fast. Well, let's just make a, a new circle here. The radiation is really important because it's going to it's going to make something really nice. So one thing you can do to make it even more real, uh, you put it really low like this. Uh, yeah, like this, maybe a little stronger. Yeah, a little stronger. And then, uh, yeah, that's actually cool. And I'm going to duplicate it and put one here where there is a lamp. Okay, and make it smaller. You have to adapt it to... Uh, the different size, duplicate it, put it here. All right, Re duplicate it and put it here. Let's make it maybe a little bit bigger. Uh, you know, I love the whole idea of like an object which is partially laid is more interesting than an object which is fully laid. Okay, so that's that. And then, uh, so let's see, I'm gonna show you in full screen, that's the final result. Oops, sorry, I went too strong on the whites here. I don't know what I did, I just wanted to add a bit of white, but I was way too strong, way too strong, yeah. Just a little tad, a little tad, a little tad. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this is the first one. So th we came from this originally, and here we are in black and white. So and I love this one, just regular black and white. This one is just a little bonus with the lights turned on. I love it.